Hello GPU junkies, I'm Jacob. And I'm Dave, and today we're delving into the mysterious world of NVIDIA GTX 1180 rumors, speculation, and wishful thinking. Join us as we try to decrypt the mysteries of Jensen Huang's mind, sum up all we know so far about the next generation NVIDIA GeForce graphics cards, and take a guess as to when we might expect to see NVIDIA's next gen GTX 1180 on the shelves. GTX 1180, I'm still not convinced about that. GTX 2080, that sounds cooler. No, I, my money's still on 1180. Yeah, whatever. It really was looking hopeful that NVIDIA's next generation of graphics cards were set to launch back around the GPU Technology Conference or the Game Developers Conference back in March. But alas, no cards have turned up. At least not yet, anyways. The best laid plans of My Cement often go awry, but despite the earlier letdown, there's still hope for a 2018 release for NVIDIA's GTX 1180 yet. We've put our money on... Um, wait, can we edit this at a later date if we're really wrong? No. Regardless, we are sticking to our guns and putting our money on an August to September launch window, but we aren't without some vocal opposition. No, Tom's Hardware were informed by industry insiders that Nvidia's next generation of graphics cards would launch in July. That also meant that board partners such as MSI, Asus and Gigabyte would start to relieve GPU components on June 15th. And apparently manufacturers haven't even been notified of any new cards yet, so that either means the July launch is unlikely, or Nvidia has decided to cut out the AIPs and sell cards themselves. From our own candid conversations with the nice folk over at NVIDIA, we've been led to believe that Gamescom might be a pretty big deal for the green team this year, and that show runs from the 21st to the 25th of August. But we aren't without our doubts. NVIDIA's first gaming GPU launch in years would be more than enough reason for the green team to set up its own launch event. But there's more to this August release than just the odd comment. Earlier in the year, community sales platform MassDrop told its community that NVIDIA had hinted heavily to a Q3 launch date while visiting its offices. Not only that, but SK Hynix recently signed a huge supply deal with NVIDIA, which may well entail the company's latest GDDR6 memory and could mean GPUs readying just in time for a Q3 launch. And a third quarter launch wouldn't be entirely unprecedented for the green team either, as NVIDIA also launched its 900 series cards after a September unveiling. Not only that, but NVIDIA have revealed that they'll be talking about their next generation mainstream GPU at the Hot Chip Symposium on August 20th. That won't be the first time we hear about it however, so we'll likely see something from the GTX 1180 camp before that. So on to the specs. If NVIDIA sticks to its guns and utilizes the latest Volta architecture, which is currently used within its data center and machine learning cards, then we can expect to see the GTX 1180 arrive sporting the GV104 GPU. Well, depending on the veracity of those Ampere or Chua Ring rumors anyway. Those code names have been bandied around with very little actual proof relating to them. But if those turn out to be the gaming variants of the Volta tech, then the subsequent chips could be given GA or GT prefixes. The exact specs of these chips are still up for debate too. The streaming multiprocessor, or SM, of the current Volta chip is chock full of silicon designed for machine learning and inference, and we just can't be sure at this point how much of this AI tech, such as the Tensor cores, will make its way into the GeForce branded graphics cards. Yeah, back when Pascal first launched, Nvidia had stripped all of the double precision cores from the GP104 silicon. The same may be true for Volta. Historically, that would mean Nvidia squishing the SMs together, thus meaning each SM has double the cores but half the instruction cache and shared memory per core. While it may not work out in the exact same way for Volta, or what Nvidia fancy calling their gaming architecture, there is still some silicon inside the current Volta design which will come in useful when it comes to gaming, especially with the new DirectX ray tracing from Microsoft and Nvidia's own RTX tech. If that sticks around, Nvidia may leave their top-end cards with a similar layout to the current GV100 GPU used in the Pro, Quadro and Tesla behemoths. With Microsoft's WinML also looking to make game-based AI a real-life experience for gamers, that dedicated AI circuitry has every reason to remain in Nvidia's gaming designs. And if that's the case, we think it's likely the green team will stick with four GPCs within the GTX 1180 for a total of 3,584 CUDA cores. And that would give it some nice synchronicity with the current GTX 1080 Ti setup. On the memory side, however, it seems pretty certain that Nvidia will ditch the costly HBM2 memory that they ship with their enterprise cards and instead opt for the recently finalized GDDR6 chips. Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron are all going to town on the new memory standard, with the latter two already confirming a role in this year's upcoming next gen graphics cards. And it doesn't look like AMD are up to much pre navi except for a machine learning 7 nanometer Vega card. So that likely only leaves a single player in the graphics card game for 2018. Memory supply is still tight however, so these cards and their potentially large banks of memory could come with a hefty premium. So that brings us on to pricing. And even with the crypto market settling down in the last few months, 
graphics cards are still expensive beasts. When you factor in that GDDR6 memory is expected to cost roughly 20% more than its GDDR5 forebear at launch, then it wouldn't be at all surprising to see the top-end GTX 1180 launching for around $699. Luckily, it seems like Nvidia has ditched the Founders Edition shtick, which should mean that the reference shroud design with blower fan style cooler will come in at MSRP. Third party overclock models, likely launching a little later, could then cost upwards of $800. The GTX 1170 in that case could cost as much as the current GTX 1080, not ideal to say the least, but the GTX 1160 should hopefully enter the market at a much more affordable cost. Without much in the way of competition right now, Nvidia can pretty much price with impunity. And that means if you want the best, then you're gonna have to cough up for it. As for performance, there's a strong possibility of Nvidia's latest GPUs being capable of some real-time ray tracing. The 3 Mark ray tracing benchmark will surely be one of the first carried out by anyone who gets their hands on one of these cards anytime soon. While performance is still largely guesswork at this time, at least we know that the GTX 1180 will be able to tear through gaming workloads faster than the Pascal-based GTX 1080 Ti, and that's no mean feat. The only comparable Volta on the market right now, the GV100 powered Titan V, has 5,120 CUDA cores, compared to the GTX 1080 Ti's 3,584. It also has 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory and has been put through its benchmark paces, but the performance difference isn't always that staggering. Yeah, according to Hard OCP's testing, the Titan V delivers 4K performance in Doom that's 79% quicker than GTX 1080 Ti. Brilliant. But with the DX12 Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark, it's only around 15% quicker. But that's a card that's so pro, it's in no way tuned for gaming performance right now. So we've got to take those results on advisement. So what do we really know about the GTX 1180? Well, not all that much by way of specifics, not even the name. Team GeForce has been remarkably tight-lipped so far. We can extract some information about what Nvidia has already released in the enterprise space, and the few hints that we've had so far. Currently, that means fast and pricey, but don't let that put you off. It will also be the best performing graphics card for gamers in 2018. Unless, of course, AMD has something big up its sleeves before 2019, or Intel is superhuman when it comes to GPU design, but I wouldn't count on either of those. Anyways, if you like what you've seen and heard, give us a like and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments what you expect from NVIDIA's upcoming GTX 1180. The floor is open. Also, check back for more in hardware and gaming over at PCGamesN.com. Thanks for watching.